Hey there, and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. I am Alicia, your host, and today I wanted to be as transparent as possible with how I go about structuring my students' first year of learning piano. So I'll translate this for both kids and adults because I find some of you who are maybe watching this video are, are interested on both sides, either as a parent or as someone who yourself is learning how to play the piano. Um, thinking about curriculum and structure and uh, how, to, how to kind of approach those really important first, first years of learning music, especially the first year, is something that I've experimented with a lot and played around with a lot. So I wanted to basically just share what, how I would structure that first year of learning as an adult student and um, tie in some concepts as we go. I also just wanted to let you know that it is March 30th, which means this is the last date to sign up for my beginner program. We've already had a lot of people sign up and uh, it's only going to be available for a few more hours. So if you are a beginner and you do want help with this sort of structured approach that I'll be sharing with you a little bit today, then definitely check out the link below because that is going to be disappearing soon. I'm not going to be opening up another class until um, like another beginner class until at least September. So hop on board if that's up your alley. But anyway, let's get started. For starters, I want to explain a little bit about the musical levels and how they work. Now, not everyone uses musical levels, but I like to use them because it gives me a sense of something to aim for. It gives a sense of stepwise progression. So there are several major schools that I've done videos on, so you can check them out, but I've done a video on the Royal Conservatory of Music, the RCM. I've done a video on the ABRSM. I've done a video on Trinity College London, and I've also talked about AMEB, so AMEB, um, the Australian Music School. All of these music schools are basically big institutions that mandate um, not necessarily a curriculum but they they give classifications for different grade levels so if you've ever heard someone say I have my grade six in music that's what they're kind of talking about it, each school is kind of similar I mean there's differences between the two so for example the RCM has uh, it goes up to grade 10 whereas the other music schools only go up to grade 8 before they go into diploma level stuff um, but the reason that I really like working around these music schools or using them as inspiration is because there are really, really smart people who have been, you know, dedicating their lives to the study of, um, music and developing curricula and developing, um, you know, grading and rating pieces and their difficulty levels and things like that. That is way beyond the scope of anything I would be able to do myself as one individual human. But what I can do is I can take what they have, um, they have created. So I can take their, um, resources and, and the pieces that they list at each grade level, and I can use that and apply it to my own method of teaching and my own curriculum. So the way that I do this. And one thing um, that's unique to the RCM over the ABRSM or the other schools is that the RCM specifically has a preparatory program. Because when you start grade one music, it's not the very beginning of your music journey. It's kind of like in, in school, there's, you can start at grade one, but it's maybe a good idea to do kindergarten. Um, it's kind of a similar idea because grade one already assumes that you have a grasp of the foundations. Grade one assumes that you basically know all different types of rhythms. You know how to read notation confidently. Um, you are comfortable in a variety of scales and chords and things like that. So you can't just uh, necessarily show up at grade one and uh, start from scratch. The scratch happens before grade one. So in the first year of teaching, I like to divide that first year into two sections. So the RCM divides it as preparatory A and preparatory B, and I like to work within that. So in the first year, um, I, I like to divide between these two categories. Basically, it's like um, kindergarten part one, kindergarten part two. If you want to use that language, you could also. Uh, I, I know some people chafe at that kind of language, but I, I think it's kind of fun. It's kind of a fun way to um, to remember our own educational journeys and, and being in the beginner minds of going to school and stuff. So I, I just think that's kind of a fun classification. But the way that I structure this is that in the first 20 weeks, we cover a lot of ground. Um, we learn all the main basic rhythms, so quarter notes, half notes, whole notes. Uh, we even go so far as to learn dotted quarter notes and eighth notes. We even dabble a little bit with triplets, and we do some of the common time signatures. So we'll do four, four, three, four, two, four time, and we'll also do six, eight time. So 
from a notation standpoint, we get comfortable. Uh, we kind of start in, in hand positions and in scales, but I like to get my students out of hand positions really quickly. So one thing with method books, if you've worked with um, either Alfred's or Piano Adventures, um, Alfred's especially likes to really keep you in a five finger hand position, which is good because it allows you to play music more easily, but it it's not very helpful because it's not gonna, it's, it's not really like a real world approach. Like anytime you pick up a random piece of music and you're like, I wanna learn this. It's not going to be in a five finger position. Your hand's going to be moving around quite a bit. So that's something I really put a precedence on exploring in the early days, just making sure you're not spending too much time locked in these five finger positions because um, it's not really going to prepare you that well for um, more complex music. I mean, to give Alfred some credit, it, it kind of only keeps you in hand positions for a little while and then eventually the, the pieces start growing out of that. Um, other things I like to teach in the first 20 weeks would be um, we start getting into uh, five finger scales and a few different keys. So I like to look at the, the main keys. So um, C major, G major, D major, F major. Also a little bit of minor keys. So we'll do A minor and E minor and a couple full scales. So the full scales that I like to do in the first 20 weeks, um, somewhat depends on the student, but usually C major scale and A minor scale at the very least we'll try because those ones don't really have any sharps or flats to worry about. In the preparatory B stage, so the second half of the year, um, we get a little bit more detailed into rhythms, so we'll um, we'll look at maybe more unusual time signatures, but we'll still kind of stick to the basics. But you'll see something like three eight time, you'll see sixteenth note sixteenth notes come about, and um, syncopation is something that I like to touch on as well. Because one thing I find there's a lot of really cool grade one music. So for example, I love Christopher Norton. I think his books, um, which are ordered by level, so he has connections one, connections two, that corresponds with grade one, grade to um, and all the way up to eight. They're these really cool uh, modern sounding pieces. So it's very much a graded approach. Like if you go through his books, um, they are progressively getting difficult in line with the grades, but they're more modern sounding. So he does a lot of blues and jazz and um, um, other uh, like uh, dance styles and, and things like that, just more modern sounding pieces as opposed to classical. They're really fun pieces to learn. However, it's a really big jump to go from uh, say the first two method books like Alfred one or Alfred two, uh, Piano Adventures Adults one and two into uh, Christopher Norton book because the rhythms can be pretty complex. Um, so I often find there's like a, a big kind of jarring uh, jarring moment when my students transition from the method books into more um, challenging pop pieces that are still at a grade one level. So what I've done uh, more recently in my teaching is um, start looking at uh, learning a little bit about blues, learning a little bit about syncopation um, and more complex rhythms in that first year just to kind of smooth the transition into into the grade one material. So another thing that I do in the first year is um, one way you can think of this, if you're separating it in two parts, um, say you're using the Alfred method books, I would do this book in the first half of the year. And then, so this is the um, basic piano course book one for adults. I would do this in the first half of the year and then book two in the second half of the year. So you'd go through two method books in a year, really fast pacing, but um, that's been what I've noticed gets, gets pretty good results. You would follow the same approach if you were using Piano Adventures. So they're adults, Piano Adventures one book I'd use in the first half of the year and then the two book I would use in the second half of the year. This does require, um, especially because I tend to assign supplemental material as well, um, kind of like in my course, um, every every week I assign a new piece in the course that I'm teaching. And I also give people the option if they want to study in the method books simultaneously, they're more than welcome to. Um, but this ends up being, um, Something like, I, I generally expect my students to practice like an absolute minimum of 30 minutes a day, but it's better to do an hour a day um, if you can, just because it's amazing how much more ground you can cover with that extra half an hour. And I find that dividing between um, the pieces that I assign individually that aren't in the method book and method book pieces, there's a lot of variety. So you're not doing the same thing over and over and over again every week, um, week after week. So uh, the thing that I like to, to do um, with going through two method books in a year with my adult students is to prioritize breadth as opposed to uh, perfection. So progress, not perfection, basically. If someone gets to the end of 
the Alfred book. I mean, there's probably at least 50 pieces in this book. I, it's not a small amount of music in a book like this, but I wouldn't expect my student to master all 50 pieces because that would end up taking twice the amount of time. Uh, if you wanted to go through a method book and do a really, really, really good job of it, pretty much every single piece, it's going to take you about a year. There's nothing wrong with that approach. And I've done that with my students before, but again, it, it, I don't know that the, the benefits of doing that are um, higher than the benefits of going through the material faster, not mastering any, everything, but, um, kind of making it to a grade one level by the end of the year. I feel like the benefits of the faster progress outweigh any benefits you get from perfecting so many pieces. So with a book like this, it, say there's 50 pieces inside this book. If you learn 10 of them really well, like if, if you are able to polish 10 pieces um, and the other book, uh, pieces in the book you try, you work on for a week or two, um, you noodle around with maybe uh, some of them you get to like a 75% competency where maybe it's not quite up to speed. Maybe there's a few hiccups or mistakes, but overall you, you get the gist out of that. I think that's a better approach. Um, at least I've seen better results with that approach uh, instead of trying to master every single piece, which means um, the pace that you, you would have to go through this to um, you're basically, I mean, the, the opening units are a lot faster because there's a lot of introductory material. Um, but once you get kind of in the thick of the book, you're doing something like three-ish pieces a week that uh, change out every week. So every week you're doing about three new pieces. And again, I wouldn't expect my students to master these, but just get a general competency. And that can usually be achieved with about half an hour a day. Um, and, and this is the approach that I find really, really helpful. I mean, of course, the same thing with Piano Adventures, um, going through half or like this entire first book in, in half a year, um, getting to, you know, 75, 80% competency on most of the pieces, um, getting to more of like a 90, 95% level on a handful of the pieces, I think is more than enough to uh, build those foundational skills and then um, start getting into grade one material, which is a little bit more challenging. But if you spend, like the problem I find if you spend too long at the beginner level is uh, people just don't feel like they're, they're getting better. And it's hard, you know, if you're, if you're an adult and you're learning how to play piano, it can be a little demoralizing to just be playing Mary Had a Little Lamb for week after week. So I find that the rewards are more bountiful with this faster approach. Um, and this isn't the same strategy I would necessarily use for an advanced student, but it is it is beginner specific. So this is the, the gist of how I would structure the first year of learning. I would go through two method books, like two adult method books and call that preparatory A and B. And then once you're finished the two method books, you're ready to get into grade one level material. And all of the major music schools have some kind of syllabus available for grade one. They'll have some kind of list of pieces that you could learn, um, books that you could buy that have these pieces in it. They have lists of what technical exercises, so what scales you would need to know at this level and so on. And from there, you could kind of um, extract what what things you would need to know at each level um, if you want to do the work. I mean, that's that's what I'm doing with the Complete Piano Path course for beginners is I'm kind of taking this this structure and um, I'm taking the, the guesswork out of it for those who don't want to take the time to kind of build their own piano curriculum. But having a having a clear sense of progress and stepwise movement is probably one of the most important breakthroughs I've had as a music teacher over the years. Um, that that sort of ad hoc approach, which is easy to fall into when I'm teaching adult students because they they bring in all these pieces with so much enthusiasm. So it's like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll just do, I'll just teach you what you're um, you're bringing to the table. Um, but actually, um, sitting down and saying, okay, you're at a grade six level. These are the things you need to learn, or I would expect a grade six level student to know. Um, and then uh, working with them to find music and assign pieces that are actually going to teach them those skills, I think creates like a, a deeper more satisfying um, experience of, of learning the piano. So that's the gist of it. I mean, if you wanted to get like a, like what kind of specific things that you would learn, um, one thing that the, I don't know if the Alfred books has, but the um, the Piano Adventures books, I think in the, the index, sorry, I'm having a hard time turning the page here. It basically tells you, um, or yeah, maybe I'm mixing this up. Maybe it's the Alfred book, but it basically tells you uh, 
everything. Yeah, it's the alphabet. Everything that you're going to learn. So if you go through the index um, and you go through like all of the different chapters, it's telling you you're learning melodic intervals, seconds, thirds, G position, uh, time signature, three, four. So this is kind of giving you a little bit of guidance on what things might be good to learn in that first half year of music. Um, really useful resource and um, something that has helped inform my own curriculum decisions as well. But uh, yeah, any takeaways from this might be uh, to maybe pick up the pace of how you approach the first year. If you don't know anything about the musical grades, that can be a really useful tool for um, figuring out how to make that uh, stepwise progression so you're not just learning pieces at random. Uh, and aside from that, uh, I, I guess the most important thing is uh, commit to it and just start practicing because a ready, fire, aim approach is going to be more useful than a ready, aim, fire approach. It's better that you actually get to the piano and practice than spend hours and hours and hours theorizing about it. But I just wanted to give you another tool in your tool belt, and I'll catch up with you guys later.